Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorr and I think that ESFPs are greatly underestimated and when you look at ESFP I think a lot of the time you do it with a lot of stereotypes about what it means to be a sensor and the first stereotype, the most obvious one is that sensors are dumb but of course intuitives tend to assume this but like Albert Einstein said if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree then of course you're gonna think they are dumb but in reality you have to judge the sensor's separate gift compared to the intuitive gifts and something ESFPs excel at is understanding what is important. ESFPs don't have to go around and check for hidden truths around them. They don't have to go digging for clues. They know what is most important and what is most important is what is right in front of us. We need to tackle what we clearly can hear, what we clearly can see, what we clearly can touch. We need to be aware of reality. We need to understand it and we need to adapt to it. As, as a sensor, you have the gift of being in the moment and of having stage presence and of knowing what is important. And a sensor knows and understands the world around them. A sensor understands and does not miss what's happening around them. A sensor pays attention. A sensor doesn't miss what the teacher said in class, what the other person was saying. They don't stop to listen, tune out and go uh, thinking about uh, something completely different mid-conversation. They pay attention. They hear you. They listen. They understand. And they are the best at formulating a quick response to what is happening. ESFPs have two, uh, actually four key intelligences. First, they are greatly adept at understanding people and people's social roles and people's abilities and what people are thinking and feeling. ESFPs are also amazing at understanding and seeing what another person is saying from different edges. Understanding another person's possible intentions and meanings, understanding uh, different possible ways to understand another person. They are great listeners. ESFPs are great listeners and they are greatly amazing at when it comes to survival. When it comes to adapting to what you have, if uh, whatever life tosses at you, an ESFP is amazing at adjusting to circumstance. Okay, so this is what I have to deal with. Okay, then I will deal with this. Then I will make the best out of this. If this is what society, if my environment requires of me, then I will try to do this. ESFPs are amazing at living up to and ad adjusting to natural circumstance. And ESFPs have amazing nature intelligence. ESFPs understand the room. They understand where everything around them is. They understand how far away it is. They understand where the door is. They don't miss. They don't hit and the fall over something. They actually pay attention to their surroundings and they know their surroundings and they can navigate them easily without problem. It's not the case that they start thinking about something and they become so preoccupied that they forget about everything. No, they know what is going on around them. They adjust to circumstance. Survival intelligence is like, uh, in a crisis, being able to know how to survive at the best, how to land on your feet if you're falling, how to uh, come out ahead no matter what's going on. ESFPs have the gift of interpretation of people, of nature, and of survival. And these are the four key intelligences for an ESFP. Besides this, ESFPs are great explorers and communitarians. They are friendly, they are social, they are community oriented, they are people oriented. They are great serve, they have a great sense of service. They are great for living up to social expectations, for making sure communi the community holds together, for making sure that everyone around them works together. They are great for exploring the world around them, for bringing world, the world into our <laughs> scope of vision, for making us notice the important things in life, that the sun is shining, that the nature is beautiful, that this amazing world around us exists, the fact that we are alive, this amazing 
thing that we all seem to forget about. The fact is, we all seem to forget about the fact that we are alive, that this is a, we have a world around us. We have a sun that is shining. We have things around us that are so important to cherish and to appreciate. And ESFPs are the ones that help us appreciate this, that help us understand what a great, great and fun world we are living in. ESFPs are, in many ways, great for when it comes to actually bringing out something profound in something so simple. ESFPs uh, may not, they may be mistaken as unintelligent, but a lot of the time they will say something so simple and everyone will go like, oh yeah, so what? But then they will say something about this and they will bring to attention something about this. And it will be so profound that people are really thrown up and people really start to realize what they are dealing with. Intelligence, as in IQ, is something you can develop. It's something all types can have. It's something that isn't related to intuition. Uh, it's something that boosts intuition, but it's not something that is uh, something an intuitive never necessarily have more of than a sensor. A sensor has the ability to, in many ways, manage sensory stimulation and sensory thrill and sensory displeasure. To hang in there when things are tough. To hang in there when things aren't going as they are supposed to. ESFPs are the ones that help us in times when reality gets a little tough. Often they help us by bringing up options. Okay, so everything we planned went wrong and nothing went according to our fantasy expectation that ENFPs tend to have. Well, as an ESFP, you don't really care about that. You, you go, okay, so what can we do with what we have now? Uh, ENFPs tend to get lost in their expectations and what they want and their dream and fantasy reality, their fairy tale Disney world. ESFPs don't. ESFPs go, okay, so what's beautiful with what I have? What's beautiful with where I am right now? With the situation as it is right now? ESFPs help us appreciate these things. ESFPs, unlike, for example, INTJs, are great for understanding that, well, you don't have to process that much. You don't have to think that much. You don't have to make things that difficult. The simple answer is often the best. You don't have to spend that much time actually aligning and thinking and making sure everything is all right. You can sometimes just go ahead, try it and see what, what happens. You can say it and see if it seems right. ESFPs have this ability to understand that sometimes uh, thinking is not enough. You have to act, you have to do something to truly understand it. ESFPs are great for making sure you can rely on them. The fact is you can rely on them to a different extent than ENFPs. The ENFPs are flighty. They hop, uh, hop around, they jump around from thing to thing. They do something for a few years and then they do something else. And that's what they do. They seek out new interests. But ESFPs don't. ESFPs take a pre pleasure in being reliable, in always being the one you can count on in a situation when the community needs you. The ESFP is always going to be there. You can always count on them to be there. You can count on them to be part of your traditions, to be a part of your rituals, and to be a part of what you find fun. ENFPs get so bored so quickly. And they, when they get bored, they tune out and they stop caring about what other people say. ESFPs don't uh, stop listening even if they are bored. ESFPs still pay attention, they still understand, they still know, focus on what's important. ESFPs don't need the same amount of thrill seeking. They don't need the crazy uh, highs and the crazy lows. They don't need the uh, experience of having, uh, going skydiving and then uh, going uh, climbing on the Mount Everest. They just need the pleasure and the thrill of the here and now. They just need to be there. They just want that ability to be there. There is no thrill seeking in being an ESFP. There is no thrill seeking in being an ESTP. ESFPs and ESTPs are more extroverted than ENFPs and ENTPs. They are greater with people, greater in crowds, greater where things are happening. 
ESFPs and ESTPs are great at parties, great at social situations, areas that can overwhelm the ENFP and the ENTP. Uh, the ESFP doesn't get overwhelmed when there is too much sensory information. The ESFP remains present and remains there and they actually become boosted by it. The ENFP uh, becomes overwhelmed but keeps on going and stops listening and starts tuning out and starts getting frazzled by everything happening around them. And often the ENFP and the ENTP focus on the things that aren't as important. They focus on the subtleties, they fo focus on the deeper things where the ESFPs and the ESTPs know what to focus on often the party itself, the spotlight, where the important things are happening. ESFPs and ESTPs love to be in the spotlight. ENFPs and ENTPs, they tend to hate the spotlight. That's an interesting contra contrast here. Uh, the fact is ENFPs and ENTPs find that the spotlight is too overwhelming, so they often prefer to be around it. They prefer to notice it and uh, to be around it and see what's happening in the background of every party. While ESFPs, they prefer to be in the spotlight. And ESFPs attract people. They have like this magnetic attraction skill. ESFPs just get draw people to them. ENFPs don't have that magnetic draw, that magnetic pull that gets everyone around them looking at them. ESFPs, when they enter the room, everyone is going to look at them. ENFPs are much more subtle much more sneaky. <laughs> they enter the room and they don't always become seen in the first. When you look at it, I think a lot of the time the stereotypes about ESFPs and ESTPs are so flipped. We need to start talking about what ESFPs really are. We need to start learning about how they really work without the stereotypes. It's so easy to look at them with that intuitive bias when you don't know them, when you don't meet them, when you don't talk to them. But if you want to learn about them, go talk to them, go actually explore their gifts and start looking at their gifts not as a result of what they lack, not as they lack intuition, but what they have what they have that you don't. Because that's where you can actually learn something about another person that can actually make you connect with them and understand them and appreciate them in a whole new light. These are my thoughts on the ESFP and I hope you enjoyed this video.